I wrote this song a day after my friend's wedding. As you get older, those special nights, you actually can appreciate it. Whereas when you're younger, you have those kind of nights every weekend. We were all with friends and dancing and having the best time. There was a live hip hop R&B band that was just playing classic songs. The next morning I woke up and I, I wanted to try to write a song that could be played in that dance circle at a wedding. And this is the song that came out. It's definitely inspired by Bismarck Key. And it's just a big old love song that I can't wait to play live. Our older brother Mark was a pro golfer after college. He played on the Canadian tour and he basically traveled across Canada and the United States for a bunch of years. And I couldn't help but see the parallels between what he was doing then and what Mike and I are doing now as musicians, traveling on the same highways across the country, probably dealing with the same self-doubt and missing home in the same way. So this song is about that. I remember being in the studio working on this one and Gavin had uh, Peter Gabriel uh, in your eyes kind of blaring out of the speakers trying to find the same world. For any guitarists out there it's also a song that's in dad gad tuning which uh, is interesting because the first time I've ever written in that. Sometimes in life romantically we want somebody and it's just not meant to be. Carolina is a song that is about that moment where it flips for you, where you, you go from doing whatever it takes to be with them to deciding, okay, this, this isn't working out, this will never work out, I've gotta give up and let go. Originally, Carolina was, was titled The Sulphur Gondola, and I had this other song written that wasn't chosen for the record, but there were bits of it that were really unique and really special, and Gavin kind of showed me those parts, and and help me get Carolina to where it is. It's the first time I really got to work together on a song with Gavin. Carolina has, has really affected the way I've been writing ever since. All the time was written as a reminder that no matter how bad things get, there's still things to be grateful for all around us. At the time, it was January 2020 when I finished this song, and the Australian wildfires were going on, and I remember thinking that, wow, the world is really on fire. This is crazy. And then obviously this year happened. But I'm really proud that I was able to put in a song some of the things I really believe in, like positivity and trying to find gratitude every day. It's got a line in it that's maybe one of my favorites I've ever written. Uh, and it's in the chorus, which is fantastic. There are stars in the sky, traveled centuries to be with you tonight. I'm very proud of that lyric. There's good things all around us all the time. This song is a plea to a loved one to basically give you a little bit of time to figure yourself out. We all have our bad days and bad weeks, and this song is about holding on for dear life trying to figure things out. It's the fastest song I've ever written as far as Beats Per Minute goes. I was supposed to, to do a co-writing session with somebody, and Gavin gave me a little bit of advice the day before. He said, write something fast, stay away from E minor, and try to write a hit. And the person I was co-writing with showed up a little late. And in that little period of time, the germ of this idea came. I'm really proud of it. I think it's kind of like a heavy acoustic vampire weekendy vibe. And can't wait to play live. Do you ever have one of those days where you just hate yourself? That's what this song is about. I wrote it after thinking about a conversation I had with one of my buddies in my early 20s and we were just joking around being self-deprecating and seeing how, how could we want to be with somebody that wants to be with us? We don't even like us. That conversation came to my head a couple years ago and I immediately ran home and, and, and sat down at the piano and finished it. It was too good to let go. This song is really important for the record because I think it, it shows a side of us like an upbeat an upbeat rhythm side that we bring to our live show. It's kind of got a Paul McCartney vibe. In the bridge section, you can hear just a little bit of Mike's dog Cash barking. That came from uh, a little clip we took in the basement, which I always think about in this song. I come from one of those unique families where everybody gets along really well. Uh, I've got two older brothers, Mike being one of them, and a younger sister, Vanessa. 
and we're all close enough in age that, you know, we went to high school together. Our friends kind of are all friends with each other. One of the things that happens in life is as time moves on, people move away. Our sister lives in Calgary, our older brother lives in Florida, and we don't get to see them nearly as much as we'd like to. And Brother Should is about that sentiment exactly, is just missing those people you care most about. We live in a time where we can still stay connected, which is great, but it's just, it's not the same. And that's what this song is about, is kind of missing, missing out, missing out on those people. Originally our recordings were done in our parents' basement, focused on keeping things quiet. To do that we used like blast sticks, a lot more mutes on, on the toms and snare, just get it done one, one take. When we went to Noble, it was based on getting just really good sound, so we ended up using the heaviest drumsticks I've ever held, hitting the snare as hard as you could, hitting the kick as hard as you could. You got the, the mixer, the producer, Maddie, myself, management, um, and the guys that are working at the studio just running around grabbing different mics, everyone trying to get the best sounds out of the time that we have in the studio, you have just a lot of different brains figuring out what's, what's going to work for the song. Before getting picked up by Inside Pocket and, and working with Gavin Brown, I had built up a project studio and I just assumed that that's how I'd always work. You know, doing vocals and guitars in a bedroom and, and recording drums in a basement. But all of a sudden we were at Noble Street Studios in Toronto, which is one of the nicest places I've ever been to. Instead of having to press record on a laptop to do my vocals, you know, I was in a nice vocal booth with a really expensive microphone. Instead of being at a keyboard at home, I was sitting at a grand piano. Where, where we set Mike's drums up, it was just this huge, this huge room with microphones everywhere. And it was just such a unique experience that I don't take for granted. We were able to, to kind of take this group of songs to another level that I would not have been able to bring it to.